Richard Novati Kali Hospital at Sugakope in the South Tong district of the Volta region is a faith-based non-profit health facility owned by the Catholic Diocese of Keta Kachi. As a Catholic health facility, it operates according to the doctrines of the Catholic Church through the National Catholic Health Service. The hospital, formerly known as the Komboni Hospital, is a proud member of the Christian Health Association of Ghana, CHAG, an agency of the Ministry of Health. As its name itself suggests, the hospital was established by the late Reverend Father Richard Novati, an SVD and a Komboni missionary and Reverend Father in 1990. The hospital began first as a clinic and later in 1999 recognized by the Ministry of Health and the Ghana Health Service as a polyclinic. On 16 April 2009, the then Komboni Polyclinic became a general hospital rendering all manner of healthcare services to several thousands of clients within and outside its catchment area. One of the motivations for the establishment of this unique hospital by the late founder was to take care of the pressing health and other needs of the people of the area. Most Reverend Gabriel Edo Kumoji is the bishop of the Keta Akachi Catholic Diocese. When the missionaries come, one of the first places or first things we ask them to do is to immerse themselves in the, in the area and immerse themselves with the people. Learn about their culture, learn about their problems, learn about their social life. And then we try to put the gospel through that. And so for him, his interest went immediately into the needs of the people, education, he saw also health care, and then he saw many like uh, skills, skill development. So he went immediately to help in that sense. I think also he started like as he said a primary evangelist, I mean primary uh, health care, where he was going to village to village, he organized a car which goes to take care of the people. But there he saw that they cannot only pre do preventive, but they have also to cure and to help. Because otherwise many of the people are depending on the herbal medicine or other traditional ways of a cure, and which sometimes we say we only give it to God. You know, the only help, even for malaria, and that time we have Bihazia, and we have so many things around this area. The only thing is people who attribute traditional meaning to it and say spirits, which he wanted to correct and know that we have signs and we have also situations which we can help. So that is why also this happens and then he brought in this, that motivated him, the needs of the people. The director of the Diocesan Health Service, Reverend Father Lieutenant Colonel Winfred Delali Kwajo Sraha retired described the late Reverend Fanda Richard Novati as a seed planter whose fruits are there for all and sundry to see. I want to describe him as a, a seed planter because without him unilaterally laying the foundation of this facility beginning with it as a small healthcare post, uh, I don't think that he would have reached this far. He has sacrificed his life as a priest to ensure that this facility had a beginning. And uh, I am grateful that he laid the foundation for what we are now calling a, a hospital. So I, we should be very grateful to him because uh, building a hospital it's not an easy thing. It involves a lot of funds. If you don't have the funds, it's a difficult project to accomplish. We want to thank him for the way he has been able to mobilize funds and to put the funds to good use. He has been selfless. If 
he had kept all the funds that he received from donors to himself. I don't think that would have been proud of this facility. So we will say that we will keep him uh, forever in our minds and be grateful to him. The Richard Novartic Hospital is a 70-bed capacity facility with 304 staff providing 24-hour general services to its huge client population. The hospital records an average daily outpatient department or OPD attendance of 200 patients. Mr. Adolf Bansa is the administrator of the hospital. Richard, Novartic Catholic Hospital it is one of the primary care hospitals in the South Town district of the Volta region. And just like other primary care hospitals, it operates as a district hospital. Even though it's just a, a 70 bed capacity hospital, it is very important due to its location. When we look around, there, we have a lot of catchment areas around Sugarcoke. After, that's when you cross the bridge, you have a lot of villages. And all those villages take their health care in this hospital. Even other villages like Dabala, Aduto, going around right down to maybe towards Alakple to the junction to Jita, then you cross to um, Amulongan area. Some even bypass the district hospital in Kandavi due to the quality that we provide over here. The medical director of the hospital, Dr. Cyril Aram Bansa, said the facility has made its name on the goodwill from the Italian and German missionaries who have since been behind the vision and mission of the Richard Novati Hospital. We've made our name based on uh, the, a lot of goodwill from our missionaries who come from Italy and, and Germany. Uh, most people are familiar with the hospital because of, of these missionaries and in fact the hospital was set up by one of such missionaries. Um, we like to pride ourselves in the fact that we render uh, a mission on the river because of our unique location by the river and Volta. We have a lot of goodwill and support from the Komboni Own Loss Centre in Italy and it was from that set of group that the facility used to have its name until it was recently changed on to the founding father of the hospital, uh, uh, Reverend Father Richard Novati of Blessed Memory. We also get a lot of missionaries from the German Rotary Volunteer Doctors Group who come in. And then the last group is the Ghana Switzerland Hospital Technicians who support us in, in, with a lot of infrastructure. The hospital takes care of clients not only from its catchment area but also from Ada East and West districts in Greater Accra as well as sometimes from the national capital of Accra itself. Miss Christiana Sichofe Glegui is the nurse manager of the facility. The client travel as well as from Accra, from Adan to come to this facility for us to give the best of quality care that we can. Some from Adan, for instance, they can't speak our language even, but once they come, they have the trust in us that we can actually give the best of care to them. So they always rush in. Among the numerous services rendered by the Richard Novati Hospital, are two major groups of surgeries. These are obstetric and gynecological surgeries as well as the general operations. Dr. Mumudu Cham is one of the experienced surgeons of the hospital. 
on on the whole, we do um, two main groups of surgeries. We do obstetric and gynecological surgeries, and then we do general surgeries. Um, that's because we have a, a general surgeon, and then we have experienced medical officers who also do um, gynecological and obstetric surgeries. With the general surgeries, the cases we see most are hernias. Um, hernias that come from communities. We, 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 we are operating in a rural setting where a lot of the jobs require hard labor. A lot of people are farmers or artisans and so on. So we do see quite a number of hernias. And then the second general surgical condition we see things regarding lumps and swellings on the body that need to be removed and sent for the pathologist to look at. These can be on the breast, they can be on the, the skin, the extremities or anywhere. The third um, is a bit more complex and that is people who have neck swellings, what we call goiters. We also do surgeries for goiters here. Our surgeon, Dr. Bansa, um, and his teams usually do those surgeries. So these are the general surgical cases we see. With the second group, obstetrics and then gynecology. With obstetrics, it's mainly caesarean sections uh, for pregnant women who have indications for caesarean sections. For gynecology, which is part of the obstetrics and gynecology, we mainly, mainly, mainly operate on women who have fibroids, uterine fibroids, which are tumors of the uterus that have to be removed. On a low month, we do 40 surgeries, about 40 surgeries. But our highest number of surgeries, we can do up to 70 surgeries in a month. And when we have foreign missions, sometimes it can go above 100 surgeries uh, in a month. So these are the main uh, operations we do in the theater. This, this is the major theater, but then we also do emergency surgeries that is uh, appendicectomies, removing appendices, people who've had accidents. We do surgeries for them as well. Uh, these are emergency surgeries. The hospital is gradually growing into specialized services so as not only to take care of the increasing needs of its clients, but also pride itself in the vision and mission of the founder. One of such special areas the hospital is using to positively impact the lives of the people is its well-equipped eye clinic. Every year, twice in a year, beginning around March and then July, we receive specialists from Italy who come to carry out eye surgeries and other eye treatments in the hospital. And that is one thing that is making the eye clinic a prominent one within the catchment area. This year, we have added optical division. That is those who prepare the eye glasses and then the, the frames. We, we have added that to the eye clinic. So, here yeah, they prepare glasses for sight and for reading. And we are looking forward to expand the place into a whole um, ophthalmic laboratory where they can cut the glasses in large quantities and the frames, produce the frames so that that can also generate much revenue for the hospital. Miss Mavis Noshi is the current ophthalmic nurse in charge of the eye clinic of the hospital. The eye clinic runs from Mondays to Fridays and we handle cases that we can handle and the ones that cannot be handled we refer them as well. If you have any eye condition, you can just come into our premises. We'll be glad to examine you and give you treatment as needed. Even if you don't have any eye problem, you can just have a normal check. 
who knows you may have a problem in the eye that you do not know if we detect we'll let you know so that you have early treatment and have your sight intact we also advise the general public to take good care of their eyes because during the period we've been seeing traumatic cases as well that is to say that people have accidents and then the eye is affected it could be lorry accidents people handling shafts like knives scissors, children playing with broomsticks and all other sharp objects, it can have effect on the eye. So we encourage you to desist from use of sharps as a play material and for adults, in case you have an accident, just come and check your eye. Another specialized unit worth mentioning in this footage is the state of the art dental department of the hospital which is comparable not only to that of the Kolebo Teaching Hospital in Accra, but also any similar facility in any part of the country. The unit, which has a resident medical dentist, provides all manner of dental care services. Apart from Accra, the nation's capital, the dental unit of the hospital is the only dental clinic with a resident dentist between Dawinya and Aflau on the Accra Aflau Highway. The administrator of the hospital is grateful to Mr. Hans Peter Spearman of the Ghana Switzerland Hospital Technicians Group. According to him, Mr. Spearman single handedly established the dental laboratory of the hospital. Dr. Henry Selassie Apalu is the resident dentist in charge of the facility. Apart from Accra, when you go into the inner cities, uh, dental care has been neglected. Not a lot of people get to get dental treatment. So for us, it's very important to come to this part of town and help the people in the town help them get all the various procedures that dental treatment offers. The procedures like extractions, restorations, uh, advanced ones like uh, prosthetics, that's the dentures, and then the bridges and the crowns. So we, we can never underestimate the importance of uh, dentistry. It's very important. And, uh, it's, 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 it uh, hurts for me when you help in the morning you come and you see patients who are in pain and then you help them and they come back and thank you. It's, it's, it's very hurts for me and that, that gives a, a little bit of satisfaction. For services, we virtually do everything, maybe except the uh, implants. So when it comes to normal restorations, when you have cavities in your teeth and it's not progressed that, that much and you want to restore, we do all the types of restorations. Amalgam restoration, composite restorations, uh, temporary restorations. And then when it comes to uh, with, uh, when the chemistry has progressed, and then we have to do other advanced treatment. We have something called root canal treatment. We also do root canal treatment. And then in case we cannot save the treatment, we have to remove it when there are abscesses and other things. We do extractions too. And then for those who have lost their teeth and want to replace, we have advanced treatments like uh, bridges and crowns. And then we have dentures too. The Richard Mwati Hospital can also boast of a standard medical laboratory that runs several tests ranging from biochemistry analysis, basic blood banking, as well as basic microbiology to pathology and basic bacteriology. The laboratory has six scientists, seven technical officers, and two well-trained and experienced laboratory assistants who averagely attend to between 100 and 120 clients in a day. Some clients also come from Abo, Joje and Adidome to run some specialized tests whose results are accurate and reliable. Even though the Richard Novati Hospital is a level 1 or primary health facility in the country, it can boast of a state-of-the-art power supply system that has brought to an end all manner of power cuts and fluctuations sometimes experienced in the area.
The project is a complete donation to the hospital, courtesy the Ghana Switzerland Hospital Technicians Group, a Swiss NGO based the facility, which costs about 150,000 euros, is the first of its kind in the country. Mr. Rudy Eggenberger is a project leader of the group. Uh, this is the uh, low tension distribution from here. The whole hospital is supplied by electrical power. All the departments are supplied from here. So uh, we have a powerhouse that is uh, about 200 or 300 meters away from here. From there is coming a cable to this main switch. This is the main switch. Together with the control, we can see how much power, how big is the power consumption, what about the frequency here, the, the tension, the 249 volts, this is the tension coming. And then from here, we have uh, options to supply via this fuse board to supply via this fuse board either the various places at the hospital they are not hooked to the UPS uh, we have the hook uh, the UPS is also hooked to these fuses here and from here we have a feeding line that uh, goes straight to the UPS behind yeah we have a bypass and we have a UPS main and these cables going straight to the UPS side. The UPS, the outgoing line will come here. This is the outgoing line. Uh, the outgoing line means uh, they are on a safe power supply. So we can we can now uh, serve the x-ray department the eye department then the theater the outpatient department we have many chances to serve the various places of the hospital with ups power and uh yeah uh here let's go to the ups side this is the ups the UPS is able to supply nearly the whole hospital with UPS power. It's a 150 kVA UPS. And uh, the UPS, I think this is one of the hard pieces of the hospital. It's badly needed, especially for the theater, for the eye clinic, for the dental clinic, for the x-ray department, for the laboratory is most needed there then you can see here the fuses we have heavy fuses here these fuses protect the battery system on the side here you see these are these are this is the battery system provides the dc voltage to the ups in case the power is off uh, this is uh, this is a general overview here. One of the major challenges facing the hospital is the small size of its maternity unit that can only accommodate 20 beds or patients for that matter. The unit is also distant from the operating theater of the hospital. The situation has compelled the midwives to push pregnant women on old stretches across rough corridors and pavements to the theater at the expense of severe waist and back pains. It is instructive to note that more than 60% of the clients of the hospital are pregnant women and mothers who come to deliver at the facility. The medical director of the hospital and one of the experienced surgeons of the facility Dr. Cyril Aram Bansa throws more light on the situation. Currently, the place we have is, is woefully inadequate to cater for such uh, 
caliber of, of people. I'm, I'm talking about the pregnant women and all that. At our peak season, there are mothers who have to sleep on floors. Sometimes some of the in charges offices have to be converted into uh, uh, wards just so that mothers can have the comfort to, to deliver. And that is why we feel the need to be able to build a bigger place, which would be ideal to practice um, in, uh, deliveries safely. The staff midwife in charge of the maternity unit, Miss Nancy Agboli, said the situation has not been easy. According to her, the current maternity unit has only two delivery beds for all its operations. It hasn't been an easy one. It's difficult because during pregnancy, labor and delivery, the mother's needs is so paramount. Where you need to do all that it takes for mother to go through pregnancy successfully, deliver on a good note, and then the baby and the mother are in good health. So the limited space, we know the protocol in Ghana is when the person delivers, you should take care of the person 24 hours. When the delivery is uneventful, before that mother goes home. But because of the limited space, sometimes we would have to discharge you after two hours or three hours. Or sometimes we push ourselves to go close to six hours because we bath the babies after six hours. So that after that, we discharge you home because there is no space and other clients are seated to be attended to. It's making the work very difficult. Yes, so, and we are managing antenatal cases, postnatal cases in this same unit, so limited. We have to uh, functional labor or delivery beds to take care of all the people who come to deliver in a day which is so insufficient for the current situation. We think we can do better if we have a bigger space, we can give out much care or much needed attention to our mothers and their babies. So the space basically is the first and then uh, delivery beds, uh, incubators for our babies units because we have only one, a phototherapy that can manage babies with jointless. Uh -huh. Those basic ones that can help us. And then uh, the, the space between here and then the theater. We will see this uh, our midwives. Some are heavily pregnant, but we still have to push our mothers to the theater, receive babies and come back. Moving across corridors. And our stretcher we have is also not adjustable. So we have to lift our mothers. So an adjustable stretcher will also help us to relieve us of the back aches and the waist pains and all that that we encounter. Yes. It is against this backdrop that as part of the 30th anniversary launch of the hospital on 12 December 2019, management decided to undertake the construction of a 70-bed capacity multi-purpose mother and baby unit as a 30th anniversary edifice. Management believes that the project would greatly address the pertinent challenges faced by the current maternity unit of the hospital. The 1 million Ghana CD project is expected to be completed and inaugurated as a 30th anniversary project by October this year. So on this occasion of launching of the 30th anniversary of uh, Richard Novaki Hospital, in the presence of the regional minister and then our former president, we unveil this council in remembrance of Richard Novaki in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. His Lordship, Right Reverend Gabriel Edokumoji, Bishop of the Catholic Diocese of Keta Akachi.
Thank you, Bishop. We proceed to the auditorium. Management members of the hospital, as well as staff of the maternity unit, are of the view that the building of such a monumental multi purpose mother and child unit for the hospital would go a long way to greatly improve maternal and child health care services in particular and the overall health care regime in the hospital. The Keta Akachi Kalik Diocese, the Diocesan Health Service, management and staff of the hospital as well as the general public have a lot of expectations for the hospital beyond its 30th anniversary celebration in this year of 2020. For the Bishop of the Keta Akachi Diocese, Most Reverend Gabriel Edo Kumoji, a strategic plan for the hospital to ensure that it becomes a specialist training center would be the best way to go. This view has been supported by the Director of the Diocesan Health Service, Reverend Father Lieutenant Colonel Winfred Saha, retired. In fact, we have discussed with some of the management to draw a strategic plan. And the strategic plan is to look at 10 years to come. What do they want to do? What do we want to be specializing in? So that some of uh, like this hospital can also be taken as a specialist training center so that they can also be accredited as a health specialist training on particular things, not everything, so that they can work towards it. But apart from that, they should also take the social and the general sickness of the people here. And many of the people here, I know, we have a lot of uh, troubles with uh, high blood pressure, we have a lot of trouble with diabetes, and so we should take care of that one too. It must be the basis. If, if you specialize, the common sicknesses must also be taken care of. So it's not only specialization for only when it becomes chronic, but we want a general. So we want them to maintain, especially this proficiency, I mean, very efficient health care, and that the people, anyone who comes here, will be able to assess good health care. In the diocese, we have three main hospitals the Sacred Heart Hospital, the Saint, uh, above, then St. Uh, Anthony uh, Hospital, Georgia, and now Richard Novati Hospital. So we are thinking of making these facilities, specialist in, uh, facilities in the uh, diocese, because already we have some specialists here. And then I can tell you that Maybe within the whole region, they have the best dental check. Many people are not aware of this. And so we have one doctor who is the dentist. Then the expatriates come to support, to build up the place. Then uh, we have an eye clinic also now. So eventually you come to realize that specialized services are beginning to be rented to the people and so in the future we want all the three of our facilities to be specialized designated facilities where uh, some specialized uh, healthcare services can be rendered to the people in and around this uh, area. Management members of the hospital also have a lot of expectations for the hospital in the next five to ten years to come. The vision we have is to ensure that this hospital will become center of excellence within this sub-region. It is my vision that before this hospital attains 40 years, we should work hard, improve upon our fortunes, improve upon uh, the facilities, the buildings, equipment which will raise the status of this hospital to that secondary level. Now averagely we see 200 patients a day. That is to mean some days it's more, some days it might go less depending on the time 
for the season, which is a great achievement. Initially, they were not seeing that. So it's like it has doubled. And we have health staff who are very hardworking, dedicated medical doctors, physician assistants, nurses, are very hardworking. We keep on educating them how to receive the patients and attend to them. Beyond 30 years, we are actually expecting better facilities so that our clients and our staff can be comfortable at work. For example, we want to build a complex maternity ward. Why? Because the current one that we have, it's so small, the, the, the ward, we can't actually divide the wards to prenatal ward and postnatal ward. We only have one ward that we try to manage and it can accommodate only 20 clients. And with that 20 clients, the number that is only stripping in here is mostly more than 20. So sometimes you are forced to discharge people early to go home, or sometimes they are being nursed on the floor if we don't have a choice. So if we should get a better maternity block with all the facilities inside, I think it will help both the clients and the, the, the midwives there. Another issue is where our theater is, is quite far from the maternity ward. And the pavement leading to the theater is nothing to write home about. The midwives are young, but they're complaining of waist pains because they have to be feeling this client to the theater and back. By the time they are back, they are so tired. So it would be good if we have a complex uh, maternity block that would help them so that they stop complaining or lose their waist pains. For now, we are a level one facility, a primary facility. We aspire to become a secondary level facility. For that, it means we will need to have specialists not only in the surgical field but we need specialists in the obstetric and gynecologic field in pediatrics and then internal medicine we have two doctors who are currently training and very soon will be coming back to fill these positions but it is our aim or it is our vision to move this facility from the primary level to the secondary um, level Hopefully, in the next five years, we should be able to train people and upgrade the human resource and, 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 and capacity of the facility to be able to move to, to that level. Long live the Richard Novati Hospital. Long live the Keta Akachi Diocese. Long live the Christian Health Association of Ghana, CHAG. Long live the Ministry of Health and the Ghana Health Service and long live Volta region and Ghana as a whole.